morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Welcome to the Rise Vermont Tips and Tricks for 2019. I'm Denise Smith. I'm the program manager for Rise Vermont up here in Franklin and Grand Isle County. Today, I am so honored to have two fabulous guests with me. I have Catherine Dimitrick uh, with regional planning and Mark Fenton, uh, who's a national walkability expert who we have on site in Franklin and Grand Isle counties for the next four days. We're really excited to have him here. I'm going to let them introduce themselves to the guests out there this morning. Thank you for having me. I'll start um, with you, Mark. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. I'm a, an engineer by training, which oh. sounds kind of weird because I work in public health. I actually work at the nexus between public health planning and transportation um, and often work with people like Catherine and you all over the country uh, who are uh, trying to bring together the idea of designing their communities for healthy behaviors. So they're thinking about things like how do we make it safer for kids to walk to school and people to ride bikes and us to be active as part of our daily lives and by the way have access to healthy choices like be able to ride my bike to the grocery store so I can make healthier food purchases or um, get to the farmer's market without having to start my car. So th um, this work is actually going on all over the country and I'm really excited that RISE has taken the, the role that it has here in Northwest Vermont. Thank you. Thank you for joining us and thank you for coming and spending so much time with us this week. We're great. really excited to have you here. So, Well, I was lucky to come back in 2015 and it's, a, it's really exciting to see even what has happened just since then. You guys have been doing so much. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, good. Thank you. And Catherine? Yeah, hi. I'm Catherine Dimitrick from Northwest Regional Planning Commission. We work with communities in Franklin and Grand Isle counties. We work with them on community development, economic development, transportation, emergency preparedness, water quality. Um, and we, we look at many of the same issues that Mark talked about from a different perspective, but we often are doing the same thing, bringing together the needs of public health and community development, job creation, um, environmental conservation, and looking at what can we do to help our communities thrive in the future when we're considering all of our goals in those areas. It's awesome. It's great to have both of you here at the same time. I hope we get to spend a lot of time with both of you over the next week. Um, so I, the, big, the big question, what we're doing this year in 2019, is tips and tricks. And I think one of the things uh, RISE is really excited about uh, right now is we have an, uh, an advocacy page on our website called the Action Center. Um, and encouraging more people to get involved in walkable, bikeable, movable communities. Um, and I'd love, as experts in this world in planning and transportation um, and economic development, what are some tips and tricks that you could offer just to the average person who might want to um, walk their child to school one day and doesn't really have the, um, doesn't know where to start? Um, so I guess that's my question. Um, I'm going to put out there right now for both of you to, to, help, to help frame the conversation this morning. So, so one of the things we know is that um, the environment is a pretty strong determinant of people's behavior. You know, the choice to walk to school, ride your bike, uh, be active as part of daily life, just go out for a recreational walk in the evening, take the dog out or whatever. Um, your environment matters a lot, whether you have a sidewalk or not, whether the traffic is fast and near or far, right? Yeah. Whether your sidewalk's right at the edge of the road or set away from it, um, yeah. whether there's a bicycle lane or not, um, and whether there's some separation in that bicycle lane. I was excited to see, since my last visit, it may not seem like a big deal, but on Route 7 through St. Albans, uh, there are bicycle lanes, and when they repaved, they put a buffering strip. So it's a fairly wide stripe, 18 inches, between the car travel lane and the bicycle lane. That doesn't seem like a big deal, but it makes many cyclists and drivers more comfortable. So we know the environment matters. Um, whether you have a neighborhood elementary school or whether your community has decided to consolidate schools and now the school is 15 or 20 or even five or six miles away may be the difference between your child walking or not. Um, so environmental decisions, whether they're land use decisions or the transportation network or even the details of design, safety, whether the building is at the street or set back. We talked about the ACE hardware on 7 yeah. here in St. Albans. Yep. The fact that that, having been more, built more recently, was brought up to the street versus what we did in previous decades, if you look at that Hannaford's or the Walmart, they're set back in the giant parking lot as the first thing to greet you. So if I arrive as a pedestrian, I still have to get across the parking lot to the front door. The details matter. So uh, the first thing I tell people is be an agent of change. If you possibly can, bring your voice to these conversations. And, you know, Catherine can give you a sense of kind of how those decisions are made at local planning boards, village boards, select boards that, that grant the permits to developers and so on. That matters a lot to be a voice of change. Uh, but before you even do that, one of the simplest things you can do is role model the behavior. You know, be the person who does walk your kid to school one day a week. Choose during the summer when the weather's nice. If you could, ride your bike to work 
once in a while, even if you can't do it every day, um, to because you being out there invites others to do the same. Yeah. So you know, it's it's think about your own behavior, but also think about can you be a voice for change in the community as well. I love that. Yeah. So yeah, how would yeah how would well, someone? And I wanted to to build on that a little bit. You talk about uh, being a role model and mm -hmm. and modeling that own behavior yourself. The reality of many of our communities is that it may not be possible for you to walk right from your house to the school, but that doesn't mean you can't drive to a place where then you park and walk from there. So it doesn't have to be all or nothing. It doesn't right. have to be perfection. You can find the places where you can make a difference, where you can alter how you get around a little bit. That's right. And that can really matter. And the second thing I wanted to say is that no, you don't need anyone's permission to be a leader in your community. You don't need to check in with anybody to use your voice to advocate for what you think your community needs. So that's first. But then I'm going to tell you about some ways that you can get involved. Um, I love that, that being first. You don't need right, anybody's you don't permission. Need any, you don't need to ask anyone's permission to step up and be a voice in your community. That's great. But if you, the people that you want to talk to are your local planning commission because they often make the land use decisions, the structural decisions about what happens in the community. You want to talk to your select board or your village trustees or the city council because they hold the purse strings. Mm -hmm. And it's really important that they're on board with any ideas that you have because they can control um, getting the funding in the community to make that happen. Uh, and you can find out when those groups meet, often by going to the town website. Vermont law actually requires, if a town has a website, that the agendas are posted so you'll be able to see what the meetings are, when meetings are happening and what they're talking about. And if they're not talking about what you want them to be talking about, know that every meeting has a public comment period where you can go and express your ideas and share your enthusiasm and your excitement for what you'd like to see in your community. So start by reaching out to the people that you know are serving on those boards or that you may not know them now right. but that you, you want to meet. Right, um, and that's a formal way of getting involved but also there's a lot of the change that we see happen in our communities is a group of people who are really excited about something and get excited among that group and then bring on the, the leaders who are busy doing all the other things they already have on their plate. That's right. I remember years ago we started the Walk and Bike St. Albans group, which is now um, full circle. You know, uh, a few years later is actually coming back and sort of uh, being uh, reborn again yeah. in some ways. And and that was uh, the group of people that worked with the safety committee. Who who knew? But the safety committee in the city council is the group that helped us find the funding to redo Alder Street sidewalk. So they reallocated money so that we could then now walk our kids um, safely to school and also to put in that nice, um, the beaconed crosswalks right. with the flashing lights and the solar panels. Um, but that was all through that, that small advocacy group that we formed um, years ago. So that's, an, that's another great way of doing it is creating, uh, cre finding other like-minded people that want to do, see similar change in your community. Absolutely. And it makes a big difference because when a community engages like that, then, then entities like the State Department of Transportation have to listen. You know, so many of our small towns, yeah. the main street is the state highway as well. Um, and if a town has a, a unified voice and says, look, this is our, our, we want the feeling of our main street to be a main street, not a state highway. It's not just about moving truck traffic through fast. It should also be about respecting the businesses along this corridor. And I should be able to go to park once and walk to multiple businesses and safely get across the street to the ones across the street. Um, and, and indeed, by the way, there's research that says when communities invest in that, the businesses on those corridors do better. Hmm. So we're talking about economic health as well as public health going hand in hand when we design for walkability, when we design for bikeability. That they're, they are both outcomes, and it, as well as environmental health, environmental. as you alluded to. You know, yeah. We reduce the size of parking lots. We have less stormwater runoff. Why do we, can we reduce the size of the parking lot? Well, because more people can now walk and bike to that store, take the, the bus to that store. Um, so, so we need people to A, see that opportunity, but B, um, sort of when communities develop plans and have a unified voice and say, this is what we want. When the state comes and says, well, okay, it's time to redo Route 7 or Route 105 through Sheldon, and uh, we're about to do a repaving project, you can say, we have a vision for our community. We want there to be bicycle lanes. We want people to be able to safely cross here and here and here um, to get between these businesses on both sides of the street. Um, the state has to be responsive to that. Uh, you know, the state of Vermont ostensibly has a complete streets policy and says we're supposed complete streets, by the way, is a policy that simply says whenever we touch a road, we take into account all four users, the pedestrian, bicyclist, transit, and motor vehicles. So it doesn't say we design for the car, and if there's room, we stick a sidewalk over there. It says we think about all four, and we make sure we design for them. 
So the state has so stated, every transportation project has to have those four lenses. You have to think, you about, have to think about it. It doesn't mean you put a bike lane everywhere, but it means you always ask the question, what's the right treatment for here? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that really makes a huge difference, right? right. And that, that applies to local roads as well. It's not just state roads. Right. So okay. if we as a community embrace that and say we really want that and here's what our expectations are, that can happen. So it's, and this is important because people will often hear a board, say a select board, a, a, a city council say, yeah, well, we don't have the money. We can't build sidewalks right there right now. Um, we found the most successful communities are what we would call opportunistic. When the opportunity presents itself, they make the improvement. When the road's being repaved anyway, that's the time to add the bicycle lane. When we're digging up a street to fix the water line that's underneath, that's the time to repair the sidewalk too because we've got all the equipment out there and the additional cost, the marginal cost, is actually going to be quite low while we're doing this wow, other project. While we're already out there anyway. While you're already digging it up. Yeah. yeah. So we find communities make great progress on this, even modest-sized communities that don't have lots of resources that say, oh, well, we don't have the money for this. Mm -hmm. It's not about a special fund. It's about having the vision, the community voices, and we're back to the tip, which is make your voice be one of those. If you have a vision for your plan or what you want to see in your community, you can share that with the people that are making those decisions. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so and you important. can even become one of those people. Yes, get <laughs> on that better. board. Get Serve on, on that, that local board. planning board. Yeah. My, 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 in my town, this is down in Massachusetts, I, I served on my planning board and was chair for a number of years. My wife served on our, created our Safe Routes to School Committee, and we oh, got hundreds of thousands of dollars in state funds to build some sidewalks. Um, because we had this active community group. Um, I, so I, 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 I realized I can't go around the country preaching this stuff if I'm not willing. And right, it's heavy right, lifting. Right. I admit that that's hard work, being at those community meetings mm -hmm. in the evenings and on your... But boy, is it rewarding. And in, in Vermont, especially with our the scale of our communities, when you serve on those boards, yes. you have a real opportunity to make fundamental change in your community right. or even if your community doesn't need fundamental change to just be part of all the great things that are happening yeah 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 and there is a need i feel like in our communities mm -hmm. for those boards yeah. yep um Look, I, yeah i want to reiterate something that, that Catherine said this because she made such a good point don't be overwhelmed by everything we're talking about here there are going to yeah. be people watching and saying i don't have time to serve on a board yeah. and nor does it have to be all or nothing nor do you have to be the hardcore person who says okay i'm going to buy a bicycle and ride 22 miles to work every day <laughs> right through vermont winters with the big fat tires God bless the people who do that. <laughs> no, I love I, them. I think they the are same awesome. Thing. They're, they're models for, for yeah. all of us, yes. right? And they're yeah. going to be healthy and live to 105 and be vigorous. <laughs> and, and we do know there's really good research that says moderate daily physical activity confers huge benefits, right? You guys yeah. know well. That's one of the reasons we're so supportive of what we call active transportation. But yeah, there are other ways to do it. And another example that you gave was the, the parent who says, well, I'm going to just park at that church parking lot that's mm -hmm. empty on weekdays and walk from there to my kid's school. Yeah. It's not that long a distance. I could also drive to and from work, but keep a bike at work because mm. my workplace is right along the rail trail. Mm -hmm. And I could, during the day, go for a quick ride or maybe even ride to the post office, the bank, the Walmart to do a couple of errands. Um, uh, maybe I could convince my business to have a fleet of loaner bikes. And my fleet could be two or three bikes <laughs> right, right. that Doesn't the employees right? yeah, yeah, yeah. use yeah. during lunch hour to run errands, to just hop on a bike for a ride because we're right on the rail trail or we have a nice bike lane in our town. Um, in other words, think about what the incremental changes are that we could make. And we've seen workplaces do just what I've said, and the whole culture of the workplace starts to change. There are the group of people who say, we're going to go for a walk at lunchtime to go. We're going, we're going to go out to lunch, but we're not getting in the car. Yes. Um, <laughs> we're going to hop on the bike. i got to run down to the bank. Does anybody need me to pick up anything at the pharmacy because I ride right by there? You know, and, and the whole culture starts to understand. So it's not just about the big trip you take every day, your commute trip, but there are a lot of little trips we take. We walk to our mom's house to check on how she's doing rather than drive there and then mm -hmm. take her for a walk, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Rather than drive her to a park to just go sit on a bench. Let's actually go for a walk, mom. Uh, think about the ways you can bring this into your life in, in those small measures that add up over time. And yeah. I think that you apply that same approach to community change and making communities more walkable. You don't have to go from nothing to building a five-mile perfect sidewalk with granite right. curbs. So true. You know, maybe it's a series of informal paths that are connected. Uh, one of our communities, uh, Montgomery, when I was there, uh, they were talking about how there's been this series of informal paths that have created b behind people's backyards yeah. to get from here to there because people are okay with it. Yeah. And maybe that's where you start. Right. Yeah. And maybe we find some funds and we put some gravel down so that doesn't erode and it's safer. And right. maybe we even do some leveling work and make it handicapped accessible. We make it, you yeah. know, something that somebody could even right. wheel a wheelchair. Right, but you start with something where you and are. build from there. Yeah.
Yeah. It's a great point. I'd love for you to give us an idea of what we're going to be doing over the next week while you're here. I know we're visiting a number of communities right. in, in this region. So I, and any, just what, what, what do you do? Well, how do, it, how do, you, the, how do you do what you do? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, talk no, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm really fortunate because often one of the, the coolest things we get to do is what we call walk audits. where we And we're going to do a bunch of those in some of the communities that we're going to visit where we get community stakeholders. And stakeholders could be any of the residents we just talked about, but also board members, um, you know, other partners. Um, um, uh, school officials, local business owners, uh, and we're going to go for walks in areas where there might be opportunities, where we've already done good work, but maybe there's opportunity to do more. We call it a walk audit because we are auditing the environment for its friendliness to the walk or bike or transit trip. So um, we will take a walk and actually score the experience on a zero to 10 oh. scale and say, you know, I give it a nine because the sidewalk is wide and it's set back from the road and there are shade trees and benches in front of the buildings. Or I give it a two because it's a little path and it's right at the road's edge. Or maybe it's not a sidewalk at all. It's that worn, what I call goat trail. You know, that <laughs> worn path where the kids are walking to get to the park or the playground. Uh, but because there's no sidewalk there, and we give that a very low score, and we also say, what could we do to make this better? How can we raise the score here? Well, a safer crosswalk here to get from the side of the street that has the sidewalk, or maybe we create a sidewalk here where the goat trail is. Um, so we're going to be doing a lot of that, where we get That's out incredible. in communities, look at the environment through this lens, and ask the questions, what are some of the low-cost treatments? One of the things I like to show people are what we call pop-ups or demonstration yeah, projects. Yeah, I was so going to ask you. In Enosburg, yeah. we're going to see one, right? They, yeah. They've actually um, put in some temporary curb extensions, which brings the curb out shortens the crossing distance, tends to slow vehicles, makes pedestrians more visible. Um, you know, there's a reason you extend the curb at the intersection because if my mom at 81 can step out and still be protected by the curb, um, but be able to look beyond the parked cars and be seen by the traffic, right? She's not behind a parked car now. It's safer for everybody. It's Plus, for she's in the street for less time if we've shortened the crossing distance, right? Because she doesn't walk that fast. Um, so we can test that stuff at very low cost. We can use paint and temporary bollards and planters and materials like that. So my hope is you're going to see more and more of that stuff popping up in the region because those will be ideas that will come out of our workshops where we might say, let's demonstrate one here at very low cost, see if it works, check whether vehicles can still navigate safely and if pedestrians really feel safer. Um, I'm hopeful that that will come out of a number of the workshops that we do this week. That's great. Yeah. One last question. What are some of the national trends that you're seeing in this work and um, where the the work of walkable and bikeable communities are going. I know there's some exciting research that's been done lately. Yeah, well, we're seeing this kind of community engagement that I just talked about being yeah. very effective. In other words, communities that are being successful start by talking to residents, business owners, elected leaders, uh, uh, um, you know, professionals, planning, public works, engineering, uh, economic development, sort of convening those kinds of groups in interdisciplinary teams, if you will. So yep. it's not just the health people, it's not just the planning people, <laughs> it's not just the economic development. We bring them together as an interdisciplinary All group. It makes a huge difference, as well as residents, citizens mm -hmm. who just know what it's like every day trying to get their kid to school right across that state highway. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Yeah. Um, number two, um, we're recognizing this economic argument. There's good evidence now that when communities invest in this stuff, the payoff is massive, not just in public health, but in the economic resiliency and vibrancy of particularly their downtowns, main streets, business districts, even tiny little towns, you know, the, the four corners, cross streets that, that, that are so much of Vermont. You know, those businesses do better if we've created a place that's a destination worthy of me hanging out and walking to all four of those businesses, awesome. right? Yeah. Um, third is this use of the low-cost treatments, right? Okay. These pilots and demonstrations. But the biggie, number four, is policy change. It's the communities that say, we so believe in this that we are going to embrace a complete streets policy. In other words, we're going to say, every time we touch a road, we're not trying to find a gazillion dollars right now, but next time we do have money to touch the road, we're going to think about all the users. All Make it a users. complete street, pedestrian, bike, transit, motor vehicle. Or we're going to change our zoning ordinance so that next time we build the ACE hardware, we're going to bring that building up to the street and we're going to require a bike rack and we're going to connect it to the sidewalk and put the parking next to it or behind. That's we're going to create main streets that, that are, invite the pedestrian, don't punish them. Uh, we're going to change our zoning ordinance. Every subdivision is going to have a sidewalk and that sidewalk is going to, if we're close enough, connect to the rail trail or to the nearby path or the, you know, the next subdivision over. Those Ordinance, policy level changes can make a huge, huge difference over time.
And it's not like there's money that you're putting down right now. Nope. You're all you have saying, to, this costs political will. It's all, it's what, what it takes it, is courage, <laughs> courage, not dough. Okay. So, and that's why we need the citizen voices. Give your boards the courage, and if they don't have it, challenge them. Say, why don't you have the guts to embrace a complete streets policy? Why aren't we updating our zoning? I'm not asking you to write a, a check for a single penny right now. What I'm saying is, this is how we're going to operate going forward. And, and, and that's what it takes, leadership and courage. Great. Well, thank you. Leadership and courage. Let's end there. Thank <laughs> you both yeah. for joining me this morning. This was a really great conversation. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Excited to have you this week and working with Northwest Regional Planning on almost every project right now that we're <laughs> working with. So it's been such a great partnership to have health and regional planning at the same table. So thank right. you. Keep up the good work, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.